time to harvest some raw materials. Gotta be careful or she'll spook. Last Frontier and today I'm gonna to try something uh, that I think is really interesting and I wasn't able to find too much about um, during my online research today I'm going to be spinning cordage from dog fur I'm certain that I'm not the first person to do this <laughs> um, but the only records that I could really find of, of people using fur or hair for cordage comes from either camel hair or horse hair, sometimes even human hair, but I could not find anything on the use of dog hair for making cordage. So I've got a big old bag of floof from one of, our, one of the dogs, Mishka. Very fine undercoat, but oh man, it's very sticky. See how it's sticking to my gloves? That's exactly one of the reasons why this type of fur is extremely useful for making cordage. I already have an example that I've been working on for the past couple of days just to try and test out my theory. And as you can see, quite clearly, it works. So this is about 14, 15 feet of cordage uh, spun from dog fur. But just real quickly, I'll go over the different uh, <laughs> struggles that I went through learning how to do this. So as you can see, I started off fairly thin. I was being very cautious of how much fur I spun into it. And it's still strong, um, but it's not quite the thickness that I wanted. But over time, you can see that there's a bit of inconsistency in the size, because I'm sort of playing with how to how to properly um, get everything prepared in order to have it more uh, uniform. That's the word. So there's little thin spots, there's little thick spots. There's me trying to figure it out. But about here, I start to figure out how to prepare the cordage or prepare the uh, fur in such a way to have a more consistent result. You can also see, maybe you can see on the camera, there's a little bit of black in there from uh, one of the other dogs, but nobody sheds as much as Mishka. She's the one with the white fur. All right, so as I've gotten further and further along this journey, I've uh, been able to get a bit more consistent. I have this end tied off. I could continue to add to this, and I will, but, um, for my demonstration today, I want to show how it looks from the start and make some cordage. So, first things first, getting a decent chunk. Maybe a bit too much, we'll see. Decent chunk of the fluffy undercoat of a very poofy dog. And then, I'm not sure what this process is called. I'm sure there's a name for it. Of separating the fibers and picking out any, uh, any long, dark hairs it's not entirely necessary, but it just helps keep the consistency better. Anyway, get it nice and floofy, about 
a double handful and split that in half. And sort of co condense it all, collect it all into a big lump. And all of your work with this is going to be done on your leg. So place it on your leg, start rolling it back and forth like you're trying to roll a piece of clay into a snake. And if any bits are starting to fall off the side, you can just reintegrate them in there. This is just the rough process. It doesn't have to look pretty, anything like that. So once you have it roughly in a tube shape, this is what I'd call a starter, or as you're adding pieces on in the middle, an extension. Separate that again, just so you have a nice, somewhat even tube of fur. And then you start rolling in opposite directions. So I'm going forward with my right hand, back with my left. I'm going to try to get a twist into it. All right, see so yeah, it's starting to get a little bit of a twist. As it does so, I want to pinch and pull and try to find any spots where it's thicker and spread those out so you have as even of a piece as possible. Now, once you've got it pretty even, you spin it, but you keep the twist. And you do that a few times. All right, see how it's starting to get tight? Once you do it to where it's fairly tight and starts to wrap back up on itself, then you've started. So see how it's starting to twist up on itself? So then, as it's got a little bit of a twist to it, you pinch that and hold. Place it on your, on your leg and then use your palm and roll it towards yourself. So then that's got a twist to it. But that's not the last part. Once you've got that twisted and tight, then you flip it up and over the other side and hold. And then you keep doing that, palm towards you, twist tight, spin. Palm towards you, twist tight, spin. Getting it started is the hardest part. Once it's already going, then it will sort of keep its form and it'll be easier to get the next roll. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out a few of these just so that it can hold tight and then I'll put a safety knot at the back of it just to keep it from unwinding at the end. Oh, and if it untwists or slips out of your hand, all you got to do is just go back, roll it again on your leg, and then twist it over. So this method works with most types of fiber. I've tried this before with, with plant fibers, but I don't think my material was thin enough, so it didn't really work all that well. But with fur or hair, this works fantastically. So, let me get it to focus. You can see how it's starting to get a fairly tight twist. And it's mostly consistent, but it's got this little bulge at the end. Once I get it a little longer, I'll just wrap this around itself into a knot. But, running out of material, what do we do? Alright, now that it's got enough to vaguely hold its shape, you press it down, and it shouldn't untwist too much. And you go back to your other starter plugs and start rolling them out into shape as well. And what's important with these is to make sure that one or both ends are thinner than the other. Because what you're going to do, get this nice and tight again, this end trails off, this end starts up. So you line it up on there, pinch it with, your, with the hand that's holding the rope, and then very gently so that you get it integrated, twist them together. And twist it over, 
I usually do two or three of these before I add another one to the next short side, just to make sure that the new hair plug or whatever you want to call it is locked in. Just around tight, we'll do one more here, and one more on the other side. So now that new plug is integrated. All right, and so if you prepare several of those hair plugs, fur plugs, whatever you want to call them, make sure you pick out the bits of wood. <laughs> If you prepare several of these on side on the side, it makes it really easy to um, just integrate them on the fly without having to worry too much about um, pausing to make more. So make four, five, six of these, then you can get a good rhythm going and start really cranking out the length on this cordage. So. There's the next plug, bring this back, tighten it up, overlap the thin end with the thin end, very carefully and gently palm twist it. And even if it gets fairly thin at, at a point, um, this, this fur is so strong um, that it'll hold together but the the best bet is to try and overlap it at just the right point where it doesn't get a thin spot in the middle so as you can see once you've got the process down it's it's not exactly mindless work because you have to you have to pay attention to to how you prepare the plugs, you have to pay attention to how thin it's getting in places, but once you've got it, it's actually very, oh, it's actually very relaxing. There we go. Try to make sure it doesn't slip off the end there, but in just a short amount of time, I've been able to get a fairly consistent very strong material. Uh, I could not break this with my hands, even if I gave it all my might. But honestly, this is this is just the toughest material. Str definitely stronger than any uh, any plant fiber material I've turned into cordage before. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock some of this out. Maybe just uh, put a few clips in there of my progress. And once I got a decent length, I'll start testing. But yeah, that beautiful fluffy white undercoat from Mishka. So here's the first test. I'm certain it'll pass. Lifting firewood. Single strand. No problem. I was pretty much certain that was gonna pass. Ten pounds. Too easy. Here's a fifteen, so that's a total of 25 pounds, no problem. Another 15, 40 pounds. Don't feel any straining on the rope. Another 10 pounds, so 15, 30, 50 pounds total. All right, 50 pounds. Got it. 
Don't feel any undue stress. Don't see any wear and tear. So 50 plus 22 and a half. So 72 and a half pounds. This is where it's gonna make me nervous. Oh, look at that. Nice. I did feel a little bit of strain on it, but that might be because I'm using the same spot over and over. But here's the last weight. So, 15, 30, 40, 50, 72, 94, 95 pounds. So this is almost 100 pounds. If you can even get the cord through here. Okay, I'm hoping that the pressure of these plates isn't going to cause extra damage to it, but all right, 95 pounds. Ugh. Nice. That's some strong dog fur rope right there. Here's the big test. 145 pounds on the bar. Well, including the bar, it's 145 pounds, I should say. I think I'm gonna have to try and spread this out a little so it doesn't focus the the weight. So let's see. Oh no. Nope. Found a weak point. Well, let me double it up and see if I can do different. All right, here's the rope doubled up. Ah, got it. All right, so one strand, couldn't quite do it. Found a weak point and pulled apart. With, with both strands together, I was able to lift the 145-pound uh, weights. Mishka, your fur is so strong. Yeah, that's you. Don't eat that. Well, there you have it, folks. Dog fur rope. Spun from the fluffiest material known to man. I appreciate you watching. And should you feel so inclined, please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm trying to grow this channel. And uh, hopefully more people will be able to give me feedback on what they enjoy, don't enjoy, what they want to see in the future how long my videos should be, etc. So if you'd like, please leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see in the future and any improvements that you recommend. Thank you.